Spectrum nerds and 8-bit nerds and retro computer nerds and anybody else watching this video. This is about tap dance. As you can see, I've got it on a very old antiquated tablet I bought about eight years ago. Chinese knockoff tablet that I use for tap dancer, basically. Tap dancer essentially allows you to play tapes via a car stereo cassette player. I don't know if anybody's... I don't want to open this unit because I've got it working fine, hopefully, at the moment. Basically, a car stereo a cassette unit would let you plug it into a car stereo. It doesn't play anything and there's nothing on the tape itself, but it's got a lead that will lead to your tablet, smartphone, MP3 player back in the day. I've used tap play. You can see it's in the form of a data set unit, a C64 data set unit. For the C64, I'll link you to a video I did a while ago using this. I've now uh, upgraded to an SD to IEC. Actually, my poor C64, <laughs> it's on the cover at the moment. The PCB is actually on its way back to me. I had to go and get it repaired again. I think I had to get the PCB, the printed circuit board, replaced and a couple of chips replaced. So that's hopefully on its way back to me now. So in the meantime, I've been playing with my Spectrum again, because I'm just one of those sorts of retro nerds that needs the 8-bit computers. And I saw somewhere that you can indeed do this even on the 48K Spectrums. People may not have realised this, which is why I'm making this video. You connect it to your old cassette player in the same way, ear mic in there, leading to your ear mic in the Spectrum. And, you know, adjust the volume so it works okay, and adjust the volume on your tablet or smartphone. You can see I've got mine quite high up there. And yeah, enough talk, this does work. So let's show that. Let's load... I don't know if you can see the screen there, just about. The old command, load, ask, uh, the two marks, the two marks to load a tape. Press, oh, actually before I do that, Let's go here, let's bear with me, I'm looking at the actual unit itself because it's very small writing. These are all the games I've got for the Spectrum, all the ones I can play, which are many of these games. I'll talk about that in a moment, but I do have many of them on cassette. The beauty here now, let's choose one. Right, okay, and what I'll do, I'll press enter on the keyboard. Press play there and play on the thing image on the actual tablet. And there you go, it's working. So this is now loading. Chucky! Chucky Egg! Classic Spectrum game. I don't actually have it. This is just a fraction of the games I own for the Spectrum. I got this as a job lot. See, that's still working. And you get the classic loading noises too. It's just a fraction of the games I own. I own probably about three times this amount, four times this amount. I've just got a few out just to display. The beauty of this is I don't have to wear my cassettes out. Most of these games work. This doesn't. I got it for a few pounds of eBay. Uh, I couldn't get it to work. The cassette, I can. when you listen to the cassette when it's loading, there's something not right with it. I put it on my tablet here and it works beautifully now. So at last I can play this on the actual Spectrum. And most of these I can just put on there. Actually, most of them I put on there, in fact. Yeah. Listen to that, it's just beautiful. I am missing my C64. I've since upgraded to an SD to IEC and I, uh, a SD card reader. I can do the same with the Spectrum. This has not been behaving too well in the past. I opened it up yesterday, blue uh, sort of fresh air, clean air through it, I can through the actual controllers just to clean any dust that might have been lying around. Pushed down on one of the chips that was socketed and I heard, I heard it going a little bit further. So I'm hoping that's solved my problem. It's been behaving for, for a couple of hours now in fact since I've been playing games. It's not misbehaved since I've opened it and cleaned it. I have got some capacitors if I want to replace the caps in there. Not going to if it behaves, because that's quite risky to do, especially for a novice. If it's working, it might just be best to leave it alone. And look at that, it's loaded. I can press top, stop on there. 
Uh, stop on that. Let me just... Does it stop? Uh, stops. You can see that reading across. And we've got Chucky Egg playing. I'm not going to play this one-handed. Oh, let's go for one of four players. How do I get it working now? Oh, S to start. There we go. One player. Just to show you. It's difficult. You really have to, if you don't have a joystick, you have to have your hands all over this keyboard to get it working. But as you can see, it's working fine. And this will work on the majority of games I've tested for the past couple of hours via this tap dancer. So there you go, if you didn't know that works on a 48k Spectrum, it does indeed. Connect your old cassette player the way you normally would, and your volume and whatever. Play around with the volume on this, try a couple of tapes, if it doesn't know, just higher adjust the volume. Hmm, I got hit, <laughs> never mind. Apologies for the picture, I'm using the old RF lead there, I've not modded this Spectrum at all, so it is the way it's meant to be. And it's a beautiful thing to play it the way it's meant to be. Playing it just like the old days. I'm going to have hours of fun now waiting for my dear old C64 to arrive back in the post so I can play that again. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy some Spectrum games. Let me know what you think. If you haven't tried this, give it a try. It's lots of fun.